So what you just said to me just reminds me, dude, you're an only, you're an only child. That's I'm right. Like, we got nieces. We've got nephews. We've got friends in the building. He has two best friends, 27 floors up. Sorry about it, buddy. <laughs> and for all you self-help book writing people out there, listen to old NTG right here, Nikki the Good. I'm staring at you right now. Listen to what I'm about to say to you. You find me the chapter that explains to me what I need to do when you got Nutella throw up in your four-year-old's hair. Finally, the people's dad has returned to YouTube. It's episode two. I'm Nikki the Good. I'm your host. And today we have a very special guest. And I got to listen. I got to look at my notes here because this is a this is a sheet of things that this person does. Here we go. So from Barstool Sports, the host of the college football show, right? We got the host of the pro football football show, the co-host of Unnecessary Roughness, and who's responsible for the thumbnails and anyone clicking on that thing? Because if it was the other guy, if his mean, <laughs> disgusting mug was on top of that by himself, ain't nobody would be clicking on that. That show would be canned like, like that. And then we got the keeper of the system. The system, so all of you who are following her right now, you know she's the keeper of the system, doing very quite well. But now... Probably the biggest role that she has now, right? Part of an exclusive club, the most important club in the whole world. She's a mom. Ladies and gentlemen, moms and dads, welcome to the show. Casey Smith. Hey, Casey, how you doing? I am fantastic. See, I need you to do the intros for all these shows because the way you prop me up is much different than, say, Brandon Walker would or mm. Dave would. So I think I need you to come along and do that for me every time, if you don't mind. Yeah, Brandon Walker would just love it if no one else was in the room. If no oh. one else was in the room... It just like take full credit for it. You know, he may even take, you know, and we're going to get into offspring here, right? Kids. Yes. He may even take credit for that. You know, oh. he may even take credit for that. He, he is one of a kind. We've been doing the podcast together since early 2019. And I still have not figured him out. I know you've worked with him very closely. Like sometimes I see this very genuine, sweet person and then some wrestling thing comes in and I'm like, you know, you're just talking to me, right? right. Like you don't have to do your, your front facing Brandon Walker thing, but he's great. And as you know, working at Barstool Sports and for as long as I have, it really helped me get ready for a child because I've been babysitting grown men for so long. Oh Brandon yeah. Being one of them babysitting the adult men babies that we have has now prepared me for having a one-year-old. So a hundred percent the truth. And as when I was a producer, when I was there and you want to talk about like having to babysit people, I mean, oh I'm, I'm, I'm I was like, Hey, I'll book your room. You want me to get you a bottle too? You want to, <laughs> you want to chug on that Brandon Walker? Yeah, you definitely, it's he, true. And you know, he drinks milk, you oh, know, he's drinking a lot of milk. For you know sure. And this is, this is the thing with all of those guys there too. It's like, I wouldn't exchange any one of them for somebody else because I know them all so well and it's so much fun, but it truly has made me appreciate the fact that like my one-year-old is more mature than them oh, and yeah. he can't even talk. So I know. yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, before we get into the actual show and we're going to be covering home decor today, I've titled this, this show decor is no more. So basically we're going to get into the fact that you buy, you accumulate all this wealth, right? So yeah. you could buy nice things. And then you realize once you have a little one running around that it doesn't matter, you're just going to give up and you're going to let them destroy everything. Yes. So that's what we're going to be doing. But we have a little bit of an interesting background, me and you, how we kind of just, I guess, became friends is that like when, when I was at Barcelona, we didn't really, we didn't work on any of the same shows. We didn't really cross paths, but I think when you, when you were towards the end of the pregnancy, maybe you got caught wind that I was a dad. I don't know. We just started kind of just sharing advice and sharing stories. And now here we are on the most popular parenting show on the internet of course. soon soon to be. So yes. that's kind of an interesting thing about how we got hooked up and all together. I think that's an interesting story. Yeah. I, th I can't remember exactly when I started like realizing that not only are, I mean, I knew you were a dad because I think, you know, again, Brandon working with Brandon, everybody knows everything because that's, you know, Brandon, he loved you so much. And I remember him saying like, Oh, he's also a dad. I don't know if maybe you reached out when I put out my blog that I was pregnant or somewhere along the way. And then I realized you also talk about parenting all the time on social media. And I was like, this is different than so many people at Barstool because a lot of us like to keep those lives separate. And you do such a good job, you know, not to like, you know, pump up your ego here, but Hey, the best podcast on the planet, right? 
you do such a good job of like, you're talking about being a dad to young children without giving too much of your private life away. Right. And that's something that I really, you know, the same thing with like Dan Katz, like I look at it and say, okay, how can I balance this? Because I know what my role is at Barstool. It's talking about football. My whole entire career has been that, but I also am now a mom. And that's obviously the biggest part of my life. How do I balance it? So I started reaching out to you. I'm sure if I went back and read DMs, especially from like, you know, my son being one week, two weeks a month, I would probably be humiliated at the questions that I was asking you. Definitely. I for sure <laughs> would like anybody else would, but now it's like, no, when you find somebody that works in the same environment that you right. do and has the same kind of outlook mm -hmm. on the way things should be, that's how I was like, Oh, Nikki, the good can help me through this. And so I that's can. how we became friends. And, and obviously like, I love what you do on social media with it. Cause I think it's a really fine line balance and you do it perfectly. For me, it's more about, I think people, I think parents, like there's always that thing about like, oh, talking about your kids again. You know what? I like talking about my kids and I like talking about being a dad. And if you don't like it too bad, I'm going to ram it down your throat. You can unfollow <laughs> me if you want, but I like talking about it. And I want to make people feel okay to do it because it's always like, I don't want to be the person that talks about my child. No, my children are the most important thing in the entire world to me. It's every single moment of my being. What am I supposed to do? Just pretend they don't exist? Right. Like pretend like when I'm going through stuff, like I, and I do think I do a good job of separating like church from state in that way, where like, you're not getting the full look of what goes on in my house. You may think you do, right? You don't, right? But right. you don't, like I'm still a real person. I still have real issues. I don't have all the answers, but I also know there's other people going through the same shit. And I just like, I like to be the guy, Hey, I'm up in the morning. You got problems. Hit me up, DM me. Um, no, that, that to me is what like really drew me in from like a content standpoint. Like obviously you and I being friends, like I know, you know, like I can DM you and say, Hey, like my son's doing this, but seeing what you were doing, I was like, there's not enough of that. And I know no. you and I have talked about this a lot. Like when I was going through like early postpartum, like breastfeeding in the middle of the night, like feeling like no one in the world is dealing with it. It was like, you can either go find like sticky TikTok stuff. That's like not real life, which as we know is ridiculous or like over the top too serious. Like, I don't need you to lecture me. I need to sit down and actually talk to somebody who's going to tell me the truth, but make me feel like I'm not alone. And that doesn't really exist in this space, which is crazy because most people in this space are either parents or want to be parents or have nieces and nephews that actually want to sit and talk about it. So I'm like, why doesn't this exist? So here we are. This is what right. you're doing. You're breaking I've into it. I've never, I've never read a, a help book on how to be a parent. I've either called my friend or called my doctor, the pediatrician. Oh my gosh, me neither. Like that's it. You call your friends because I'd rather speak to someone who like, you know what calms me down when my kid has 103? When I call my buddy, Greg, who has like three kids, he has an army and they've all had 103s. He's gone to the ER. He's done it all. That calms me down. Reading about, and I said this last episode, reading about my child's EQ is not going to help me <laughs> in the moment. Okay. No, I'm shoveling sure water, cold water on his face, trying to bring that some bitch down. Yes. <laughs> That's it. I'm, man. Like, That's I'm not having good. time to go no. bookmark the page. And like, I will say, and maybe this is like me being sexist against women. I'm not sure. Do it. Like, you. <laughs> not reading a book. That's like the general cliche. Like, well, of course the dads don't read the parenting books. When I, now I'm like, whatever, my son's 13 months old. Like I know I've got a whole life ahead, but I got through the early, early stages. When I would tell people like as a woman, as a new mom, that I wasn't reading books, the looks that I would get, like I, you know, like my How girlfriend dare would be like, you, Casey. like, Oh, you, you didn't read a, like a Dr. Spock book. Like what? I'm like, no, I didn't research anything. I didn't look up birthing plans. I just was like, Hey, We've been doing this for literally hundreds of thousands of millions of years. We're going to figure it out. We just make things more complicated now in 2024. And I can tell you what, when my son has been that sick and when he's freaking out and his dad and I are like, what do we do? We don't know. We're not reading through a book. We're calling somebody and we're going to the hospital. That's what he we do. People were cooking their food like in the dirt, like hundreds of years ago and raising children. And I got to read a book. I got yeah, I'm not reading a book. Get not your reading book. A book and like no offense if you do now, now hear me out if you do want to read a book more power to you you do whatever makes you feel better what makes me feel better is 
talking to other people who have gone through it. That's also part of my personality because of what we do for a living. You know, like I'm not somebody right. who like sits and like, you know, needs to hear every single detail. I'm like, what's going to get me going to the next thing right away. That's going to keep this baby alive and going to keep me happy. And I can tell you, it's not flipping the chapter eight of some random book about a fever. Right. Just pretend you have a uh, Dave Portnoy in your ear going, shut that baby up. We got exactly. a show to do. Oh, baby. again, like <laughs> I cannot say this. And I know people sometimes are probably like thinking I'm exaggerating babysitting those boys boys as a host because it's not even just you know oh I'm around them and they're my friends like my sole job on these shows is not only to talk about the sport because I do know the sport so well but it's to make I'm the point guard keeping them all together right and that is not an easy task with Dave Portnoy, Dan Katz, Brandon Walker, Deion Sanders, all this like I have I have to babysit and I've learned very quickly what works and what doesn't and somehow that has translated to being a mom of like, I know what works for me and what doesn't work for me. And guess what? My gorgeous 13 month old baby is sleeping right now in his crib. I've got the monitor. He's happy. So it's working for me. That's right, man. If it's working, you know, don't break it. Make sure you get a system. Make sure you get a system, system. like Casey Smith over here. Yes. Before, so, all right, one more thing. There's a new segment. Hopefully it'll get sponsored. Probably not, but I'm going to hit you with a dad joke. You got to finish the dad joke. Though, oh, okay? boy. Okay. This is right so before I we get in. I tell you, big Phil Dunphy fan over here. Modern okay. Fan, so I'm hoping that this is I, something that Phil has said. I think this is a layup, but we'll see. Okay. What did one potato chip say to the other? The fact that I don't know this answer makes me feel like... I don't know. Is it something with, I, I feel stupid. What is it? I'm not even going to try. Let's go for a dip. And, <laughs> and here we go. Lay's like Lay's potato chips, like way like, off. But then I was like, if I say you want to go lay down, then it starts getting weird. I'm like, okay, I'm not even going to try. I mean, I want to go lay down. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I had to feed that kid at four 30 in the morning. I'm shoving a bottle in his mouth. Right. I'm no looking trying to find the passy on the floor. Cause he threw 17. Oh. I'm trying to no look it. I don't want to turn the light. I, you know, anyway, so, and I usually get that cause my wife can't carry him cause he's so big now. So like I got, you know, I got the, I got the, the underhook in him and, oh, I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm no looking searching the past. I thought I have sciatic in my, in the right side of my body now. Um, but it's all right. I still look great. So let's, um, let's take a dip. Let's take a dip into the next segment here. Okay. Incredible, incredible segue. Incredible. I, I mean, it's um, like you're professional at this. We're, we're talking about decor. Okay. We're talking about, uh, you are, you, you, you're a woman. You probably have great taste. You probably have a vision of what you want your apartment to look like or your house to look like. You probably have designer clothes. You have designer bags. But what has happened? Talk to me about what happens when you bring a little one into the world. Where does this from the psychological standpoint of just giving up and then also just having to accept? Talk oh, to me what has happened to you, Casey. I, so I obviously, you know, working at Barstool, we don't have to dress up that much, which has been phenomenal. And post 2020, like I always am like, what silver linings can I take out of that? And it's the way, you know, that, that streetwear and leggings and all that became a thing. So luckily for me, I didn't like that, like going into having to like be in sweatpants was not a problem for me. I'm like, this is great. So I'm like, oh, I'm not going to have to deal with what a lot of women and and men too, but mostly mothers like have to deal with early. It's like, I'm not wearing my nice clothes all the time. I'm going to get spit up. I'm like big t-shirts and leggings. Good for me. What I did not anticipate was realizing that way earlier than I thought would happen is that all the nice things in my apartment that I had, you know, in my apartment, when I was single, when we moved into a two bedroom for a nursery, I live in Manhattan, all of those things just simply do not matter anymore. And yeah. I didn't realize that it would happen as early as it did. I'm thinking like, oh, you know, when he's walking and running, I'm gonna have to put the wine glasses up. Oh no, this was like, I don't remember exactly what month it was, but I don't even think he could fully cruise yet. I was like, shit, my entire life that I've tried to make nice for me, because I am one of those people and it does obviously translate into being a mom. There's a little bit of OCD, a little bit of OCD. I like things to be clean. I like things to be nice. I also like to be, like peaceful in my own place. Well, what makes me peaceful? My nice things that my interior designer did for my old apartment that came. And I'm like, none of this shit matters. And right. I tried so hard to hold on to it. I'm pushing it further back on the media console. I'm putting the wine glasses on a higher level. I've given up, Nikki. I've given up. Yeah. All the things are in my, they're still in the master bedroom or a primary bedroom, whatever I'm supposed to call it these days. 
I'm going to have to give that up too. But that door is closed most of the time. Now it's stuffed animals, books, and toys. We have a $2,000 coffee table from West Elm that is in my shed. I didn't even put it in my attic. It's in my shed. It's outdoors. Raccoons. Like deer. They're probably West Elm. shitting on this. Thing. West Elm. <laughs> West Elm. My wife, she's got expensive taste. She likes she likes the finer things. That's why she married me and all my of great course. looks. Absolutely. Right? But listen, it's the truth. You would send me photos and I would be like, oh, that, huh, that's gone. It's, it's gone. all gone. And I didn't believe you. And like, here's the thing is I told because you asked me about my media console. Yeah, I, I liked it. I liked it. And you're like, my wife would love that. I was like, oh, it's from West Elm. And then we started talking about the fact that like everything in my apartment is West Elm because mm -hmm. most of the things that I bought, as I'm sure many people do, is like when you're single or you're dating and it's your space, it's you. So everything in it makes you feel better. And then once you have kids, like no shit, you're going to have to put up some right. of that stuff. But I don't think that I truly realized how much that was going to change. Cause like, like I said, like when it comes to designer clothes and bags, whatever, like those things were few and far between for nights out that I wasn't having when I was pregnant anyways, the designer stuff and not even just designer, just the stuff that you like, like it could be the cheapest table in the world that you love. It's still not safe enough for a baby. No. It's still not good enough for a baby that's pulling up on things. So I like very, it took me a while to accept it. And then now when I have friends come over, like my hairstylist, she comes from Boston or I go to Boston. I I can't let go of her. She's one of my best friends. She came to New York. Understandable. And she looked at my media console underneath the TV. And she was like, I cannot believe I'm seeing this day. She was like, I'm seeing Matthew McConaughey's book. I'm like his children's book. I'm seeing pianos and, and stuffed animals and balls. Like, where did your nice stuff go? I'm like, it's no longer a part of me. This Listen, is part of me. you just realize it's not worth it. It's not, not worth, it. worth it. Like my wife, she bought a Louis Vuitton. I don't know how much these things cost. She doesn't tell you don't me. Don't want to know. She 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 makes she makes money. She does very well for herself. We're 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 fine. She could get whatever she wants. But what's funny to me is when this thing comes, right? You initially get it. it's like when you get a new phone, right? You're like, oh, I'm really gonna take care of this one, right? I'm not gonna just toss it on the old couch here. I'm gonna set it down nicely as if it was a baby. But what happens is is that you're like. If given this child, this multi-thousand dollar bag gives me five minutes to just think alone in my own brain, it's worth it. If this worth thing it. gets scratched, I don't care anymore. No. Oh. It's such an unbelievable phenomenon of acceptance of just saying, listen, it's game over. They have won. They have taken over. This is what, I mean, I, I think I've said this to you. I know I've said it, it's like, this is his place now. Like yes. I, know, I just live here. I just pay for it. And he just lives here. And what I, when I really realized it wasn't worth it was when I'm sitting on the couch and whether it's Miss Rachel on the TV or a football game on TV, whatever. And I'm having to constantly stand up and take things out of his hands because he's learning like, oh, if I grab this, then I'm not supposed to have it. Like, why? I'm just going to move all those things. Right. And I can sit on the couch and we can play and watch. And if he wants to go cruise around and grab his own toys, I don't have to get up. So what I realized is it gives me extra time to watch him without having to stand up. Like Correct. I will take that. And I did, you know, I, I heard you say to your brother, which I have to say, when you said, if you have one, you have none. Yeah. And I, part of me agrees with that because he's just an extension of me and an extension of his dad where it's like, we're like two on one. But you know, I know you remember when your daughter was first, oh, yeah. born, you're like, I can't just go to the grocery store without just getting in the car. Or like for me in New York, like I have to put together an entire stroller and it's cold outside. So he has his sleeping bag. Like being a parent, you don't prepare for all of that. But I will say having two sounds like a nightmare. I'm sorry. Like I, having, and then having three being outnumbered. Oh no. Those people are crazy. Those people it. with three. No, no, no. I'm forget retired. No, 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 no. I would rather go abstinent. I'd rather just tell the wife, listen, <laughs> I don't like, even want to risk it. No, I don't care. I will go here the rest of my risk life. The second one, like when he goes down at night and he is, you know, and I knock on wood, he's been a fantastic sleeper. You know, obviously when they're first born there, no one's a fantastic sleeper, but when he goes down at seven 30 at night and I know that I am not going to be bothered Disturbed, until yeah. the next morning. And I don't have to worry about another one waking up another one needing. I'm like, 
this is great. If, if he is the sole thing I have to worry about, the idea of having another one, like, and, and as a woman, and I, this is another thing, like women who can do this, having a toddler while pregnant, forget about it. Yo, crazy. Forget about that. You like, crazy, crazy ladies out there. Crazy. And everyone keeps telling me, oh, you'll, <laughs> you'll forget about it. And you'll want the little baby again <laughs> at 13 months. I haven't forgotten shit. Okay. I remember how miserable it was. And I remember like, again, to each their own to me. I'm like, I think he's an only child. I know things may change, but <laughs> he's an only child in my book. The, before we move into kind of our, the, the next segment, which is kind of the tweet segment where I reach out to all these other people that are, you know, just just begging for my help and assistance. I am um, one of those people. So preach. Is, is that so the reason I came up the, with uh, if you if you only have one, you got none is because and this is a story I don't know if I've ever told you, but the first night my son came home. So we bring him back from the hospital. Right. The very first night. This oh, is boy. not the second. This is not the third. <laughs> oh, no. First night. Now these kids, yo, you bring them home, they just sleep. They don't. They they exist. They're they're out. Uh, they're they're awake for maybe a few hours a day. So hey. you're like, okay, we know the time slots we're gonna get sleeping tonight because we you know we've seen him for two year two days out of his entire life. So right, we course. know now we're locked in. First night, my daughter. Oh no, is sleeping, and earlier in the day. She had what we like to call, Daddy, can I get a chocolate sandwich, which is Nutella on two slices of bread. Delicious. So she, so she ate that. Delicious. And I hear at like midnight, oh, like no. midnight, right? We're still exhausted, right? You just went through like an ordeal. Screams, Daddy, Daddy. I'm like, what, what? I think Sky, Sky, you know, from Paw Patrol, I think that fell off her bed. Or she can't find a stuffed animal. Or one sock potentially came off. And I have to <laughs> heroically find that sock and of put course, it back on my- Of course, as you no. would. No, 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 no. Full-blown throw-up of Nutella all over her bed sheets, her comforter. Oh. I, I opened the light and her hair and her face was covered in Nutella throw-up everywhere. All my whole shoe. body just like seized So up. my son is like this, just being perfect. But now I'm doing laundry. I'm tossing my four-year-old in the tub at the time. Oh. I'm scrubbing, scrubbing the Tella throw up out of her hair. She's crying. She's freaking out, man. And I'm like, this is why. If you only got one, you got none. I, I have to tell you, you know, whenever like people that don't have children and I was there for so long, so I, I never yeah. truly knew that I wanted kids. And then once uh, I got pregnant and we decided like, we, you know, this is like, I realized it's all I've ever wanted, but you know how before that you say like, that's birth control. Yeah. What you just said to me is birth yeah. control for a second because, and my son, you know, we, you know, I've been, again, mm. I keep knocking on wood. Cause I'm like, as soon as I say this and publicly, like we were very lucky. We didn't have that many blowouts. We didn't have that. Like we, obviously you dealt with what you deal with, with a human yeah. baby. But when that is taken care of and he is asleep, it is just about the adults again. It's just yes. about you. Like, and I'll it's never, incredible. It's incredible. Like when he moved out of our room and went into the nursery and we had our room back again. And then when he started sleeping through the night and he's sleeping 12 hours, I'm like, wow, this is lovely. And once he starts running around, it'll probably, you know, I have different array of problems, but they're just his problem. So what you just said to me just reminds me, dude, you're an only, you're an only child. That's I'm right. Like, we got nieces, we've got nephews, we've got friends in the building. He has two best friends, 27 floors up. Sorry about it, buddy. <laughs> and for all you self-help book writing people out there, listen to old NTG right here, Nikki the Good. I'm staring at you right now. Listen to what I'm about to say to you. You find me the chapter that explains to me what I need to do when you got Nutella throw up in your four-year-old's hair because her EQ, her emotional feelings, it ain't going to help old Nikki when he's scrubbing that, right? I, I got I got Elsa in the tub. I'm scrubbing out of her hair. I'm singing songs. You tell me what to do. I'm in my boxer shorts. I have a shirt on and I'm trying, I got in the tub with her. I'm oh, in I mean, the tub. You have I'm, to. I'm, I'm ankles deep in Nutella throw up with 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 Johnson and Johnson all up in there. <laughs> you know what? You my, my tell me to read a book. Like, 
the the people that if they ever sat there and like legitimately looked at you in your face and said, well, in Dr. Spock, and I keep saying Dr. Spock because that's what my parents read with me. So like, I don't even know what the books are these days, but if they could seriously look at you in the face and be like, well, did you think to go pick up the book? Like in that, no one on the planet actually does that. And that's where I get so sick of like, when you, like, I know we're talking about decor, like when people are like, oh, well, you just baby proof and you have a little day. No, you don't. Your whole life becomes about taking care of these babies. It is their place now. It's their house, their apartment, their lives. And we're just living in it. I think about that all the time. Like if your daughter throws up, that's your throw up. You have to deal with it now. Yeah. So it is, it's just a whole life change. But what I do love is that parents these days are able to talk about it more. Like I remember when I first reached out to you the first time that my son had like a really high fever and I'm talking to my parents, I'm talking to his other grandparents, I'm, you know, all these things. And I'm like, no, I need somebody to tell me the absolute truth here that's going through it. And Nikki, the good will tell me. And TG, baby. Here we are. I'm foolproof. You come to me, I'm going to give you some answers. I got guys, you know, I have guys that were in like labor with their wives reaching out to me, telling me how many centimeters are their wives. I'm like, listen, pal, I got my own wife. All right. She has her own centimeters. I don't need to know about your wife's centimeters. You know what? That honestly should speak to you though, about like how much people trust you because like, as a woman, I cannot imagine like my son's dad doing I know. that. He, like, I'd be like, please do not tell him what's going on no, right do now. do not. But the fact that people feel that comfortable with you, like you're breaking into a market, Nikki. You're yeah. And it also helps that I don't market. look, a, it also helps that I don't look like a freak. So any of you people that want to sponsor me, I'm aesthetically pleasing and you know it. Um, he, he is not a freak. I am here to say that. Not a freak. He has a gorgeous wife too. That is Thank a plus. You. She's a fox. Um, one more thing before um, I move in. What is the biggest piece of luxury that you miss the most? What's the one thing that, that your son has taken over that you're like, Ah, oh, and I know now it's like whatever, it's over. But like, what was the what's the prize possession that you were like? I can't believe he got that. The I think it was one of the first things, and I don't know if it's like the biggest possession, but when my bar cart had to no longer be a bar cart, <laughs> and that to me, so I have this gorgeous, gorgeous marble and glass bar cart, and it is so hard to move. You can't, but it had like, you know, a gorgeous wine rack on it, you know, where gorgeous. you can hang all the different uh, like beautiful. sizes of wine Organized. Glasses. Oh, like I, you know, beautiful decanter. Like it was one of those things where it was like, when I first moved into my apartment and as you can see, I've got my Greg the Egg succession pillar back here. Like my one bedroom in the same building had it. And I have the bar cart gorgeously next to it. And it's aesthetically pleasing. The day that I saw him crawl over to it, pull up and grab a wine glass yep. and I had to run over there before he shattered it. I was like, this is going to be the biggest heartbreaking moment of my aesthetically pleasing apartment. And it sounds so stupid, but when you realize it's something that you've accumulated over years and like nice bottles of things that are just up in my pantry now, and I have to actually like climb up to get wine glasses so he can't get them. It's a sad day. What a sense of delusion you had to even have a bar cart. How dare I, you? What a past life that was. Just doesn't delusion. even exist. That doesn't just even exist. Delusion. Just like, but it was because like, I'm so stupid that when we moved, <laughs> so I was seven or eight months pregnant and we, we got very lucky where, you know, we live in a high rise in Manhattan on my floor. We no, had a couple up. that was moving into a, wanted a one bedroom. We wanted it two. So we literally just switched apartments and like read at least it's phenomenal. So the moving company just moved down the hall. Love it. My thought was like, oh, well, I'm going to get to enjoy these things for a few more years. Like I'm still pregnant. Like he's not going to be moving around. Boy, was I wrong. That bar so wrong. was a, it was a symbol of my single, lovely, fancy drinking, nice wine life. Never existed. That life and never existed. It's gone. Just said, Fuck those wine glasses. That's basically what he said. He was like, oh, you think that you're going to ever drink nice wine out of these wine glasses in front of me? Not so fast. Um, oh, Isn't it amazing where we are today now? I mean, it's just, it's just incredible. Just um, an abs- Like I said, it is his life. I'm living in it. And down to the fact that I can't even have a nice bottle of wine in his presence. Like the, no. I hope the man loves wine one day because I'm going to have to tell him these stories. Like I, I just... That, that to me, I, it's probably not the biggest one, but it was the most, uh, I don't know the word, like, I guess the most obvious of like your life is. Yep. Is no Cause if you, even if you put that wine glass in your hand and it's full, he's coming oh, he's for that have- wine glass. He's oh. coming for, he, you can't, even if you think 
Oh. You have a shot of taking a sip of this. You won't even know that you took a sip of it because he's eyeing down that glass. He says, listen, I'm going to tip that fucking thing I'm over. Gonna, you think you're going to enjoy a glass of wine and in my you, presence? And then you're going to clean it up. And then <laughs> I'm going to take your TV. And then I'm going to take your TV. Oh, the coffee you, mugs. Oh, oh, you don't think I hit every? You don't think I know that you hit everything in the master bedroom? Just wait. Just wait till I get. I just wait till I can reach the handle because I I can't I it's can't a even wrap. process it's a wrap, mommy. I, yeah, no, my my full length mirror that I just adore when I get dressed because when I do get dressed up, he he has already got his eye on that. Like I I mean, like I said, my life is no longer mine. It's his. And I wouldn't trade it for the world no, because I best. love him so much. But you do figure out really quickly that all the shit that you cared about, like from a superficial standpoint, let alone other things, you're like, why did I spend all this money? Because it's never going to, it's never going to exist until this man goes to college. <laughs> no, it will not. And then more money will go out the door and then, and so on. So oh. the circle of life. So this next segment here is called parent. I just basically parent tweets, man. I reach out and I say, Hey, you got any questions? You got any advice for us? This one's actually funny because it, it's hit on the nail of what we were talking about. It's from Andrew at, at underscore tweets by Andrew. Yeah. Thank you for making it very clear to us. What an yes. incredible name. Um, if anyone says just wait till just stop listening oh. and enjoy where you're at. Like how I say, like, just wait until this. It's such a parent thing to do, but guess what? You know what though? I love saying it to people that have Do you? Oh yeah. It makes me feel so fucking awesome and just like alpha. It's like, yo, <laughs> oh, you think that's great? Yeah, just wait until this happens. I kind of like saying it because to me it's like a parody of it. It's like I'm not saying it because I truly mean it. I'm saying it because I love dad jokes and I love being corny as hell when it comes to the dad stuff. I mean, if you follow me on Twitter, you know that's my bag and ain't nobody doing it better than me. But that's kind of where I'm at, where I kind of like it. What do you feel about the just wait till? How many have you gotten? 20, 50, 1,000? Oh, my God. So, and I'm sure your wife probably felt this too. What, what I hated it the most was when I was pregnant, right? So it's like I'm, you know, 16 weeks pregnant. Like, just wait till the third trimester. And I hated it so much because it's like, I get it. I'm going to get there eventually, God willing. But like, I don't, I'm, I'm feeling this right now. So I learned very, very early in this motherhood journey of mine that I would never say it to other people unless I preface it with, I hated when people said this to me, but because I just hated it so much. It was nails on a chalkboard to me. Like yeah. I, I do not care to hear how miserable 38 weeks was when I'm dealing with what I'm dealing with at 20 weeks. However, I will say that once now that, that my son is, is, you know, after he's a year old, he's all the newborn stuff and all that is in the past. When I have friends who are going through that, reach out to me and say things like, I'm never going to sleep again. I'm never going to get to go out again. I'm never going to be social. My just wait is usually like the positive side of it. Like I know how you feel right now. I've been there. Just wait until he does sleep through the night and you have a whole night to eat dinner. Just wait until he sleeps through the night and you feel like you've gotten the most sleep you've ever gotten. That to me is more like realistic, but I kind of see your point. I like, like being like, welcome to the Thunderdome. It's <laughs> over. It's a I'm like being your, kind. Your life is done, son. I'm being kind. Like I'm being like, no, I promise. Like you'll, you will see past this. But I also, and again, like I am jinxing myself here. But like my son has been a very, very good sleeper. So like I know that a lot of things that he that a lot of people deal with much later, I didn't have to deal with. So I also have to remind myself if, if I say, well, just wait till he sleeps 12 hours a night and then they never do. They're going to be like, well, she's an asshole because that clearly never happened. But I do I do think that as a woman, when I was pregnant, I I fucking hated being yeah told, you hate oh, it. you think you're not sleeping now. Just wait till that baby comes. I'm like, can you just let me be pregnant? Can you just let me be for a second? So, but I do see your point of it being an alpha because once you've dealt with like whatever milestone it is, you do kind of look at other people like, come on. Right. Yeah. Follow. And it's, you know, and especially <laughs> like with the sleep thing, because like sleep is like the number one priority. So like mm -hmm. if, if your kid doesn't sleep, you're basically screwed. Your life's over. It's just a fact. Um, So like that one, it's like, I just like to be as blunt as possible and just yes. be like, listen, if he's not sleep, if they're not sleeping, it's over. Like you, are, you just don't have a life anymore. Don't like, sleep. And I don't want to be like, oh, do this, do that. I just tell him, listen, we did the sleep training. This is what we did. Take her to leave it. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, I'm so, so sorry. Correct. Like, because... I'm sorry because I don't know what to tell you. And I mean, I know you and I, I talked to a lot of my friends during the sleep training period. And like, 
you know, I used um, I, no free ads, but taking care of babies actually was really good for me in a lot of ways. Like I know that online, you know, people have seen it online. Like I, I did like talk to her, but in reality, you got to figure it out on your own. You like no one, can, no one can tell you this is what's going to work for every baby. Like I had to piece together advice from my friends, advice that I was getting from professionals and then just us figuring it out. So you can't really give advice, but the just wait until is so like just kind of one of those things where it's like so egotistical, but you're right though, because you do want to be able to be like, I know you don't know. Yeah. You got to say it the right way with the right tact and the right tone. Right. Cause if you don't, you really come off where like you're written off in the parent circle. It's like, if you come off as if like you're a better parent than me, that's a problem. But if oh, you yeah. come off as like, listen, I understand what you're saying. I don't yes. have to tell you, I don't have to tell you, but you, Hey, listen, Hey, listen, you're going to figure it out. Can um, I please tell you something before we move on? Because oh, I feel yeah, like sure. you're going to really, so recently I was, I was talking to a girl who is 36 weeks pregnant. So, you know, about a month out, uh, just wait till she has the baby. Just, just, well, listen, the, I had to stop myself from what we, everything we just talked about, because she told me that she is only taking off two weeks of work on purpose and that she is then going to, she had a trip planned for work yeah. and that she, when the baby is five weeks old, is taking her mom with her and it's in Europe, in Europe for the, for, for work, she's going to go. And she said, I just really don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. And Nikki, I sat there and it was truly, truly one of those moments where I had to take everything in my body to just be like, you do not like, you do not know this person well enough to tell them that they're crazy. You do not like just say, I hope that works out for you. I'm so glad your mom's going to go. And my whole body was screaming internally being like, what are you doing? How in the world? Like, I don't think I went outside for three weeks. No. So it is a hard thing to do because I wanted to tell that girl so badly, like you, you are going to regret every single part of this. Great. Yeah. And before we, we go into the core memory segment to close things out, I'm going to speak to this woman. Okay. Listen here. Listen, listen to me. Get close to the screen. Listen to me. You're not going on the trip. The trip's over. Cancel it now. If you don't get your money back, doesn't matter. Okay. Does not matter. You are so delusional that you have no idea what's about to happen to your life. Two weeks, two weeks. The amount of variables that I could throw at you right now that will happen in those two weeks, you will not even want to go on that trip. And first of all, and just to end it on a good note, you're going to love that baby so much. You right. just want to be snuggled at home, chilling with it and just staring at it and just watching its belly go up and down, up and down, up and down. Cause you got to make sure it's breathing. Right? <laughs> right. Anyway. So let's move on to the last segment here. Core memories, core memories. I like this one. I'm a big nostalgia guys. You can tell you by the, uh, the, the room that I'm in that my uh, is underneath the stairs. This is the one my wife has allowed me um, to have. I have a very large house. I'm very well off, but this is my hat. This is where I'm allowed to. You just get the corner. Good for you. It's not a corner. It's below the stairs. Like, you know me. I'm a short guy. This is I'm Harry Pottering it right now. Legitimately. Hey, um, listen, you know what? You'll take it where you can get it. That's By it. the way, the, the short, I know you do all your Italian, your Italian stuff. When you start talking about Kelly Keegs being tall. Oh, yeah. I it's, guess it's it, one of my favorite things that you do. It's Kelly Keegs. We like it. She's tall. So we ain't got no shot. It's yeah. the truth. The it's the truth. Best. It's the truth. It's like I be, I went to those clubs back in the day. I went to Vegas. It's like, oh, I've got I I've got the uh, I remember one time we got earmuffs to my wife. I remember one time we got like the um we we got like a table whatever like that and the security guards they will bring girls to you oh, like yeah. back in the day. Yeah. They brought over like like three girls that were like had to be from like Scotland or something and they were like 5'11" and I went up to the guy I was like, "Excuse me, sir. It's not going to work for me, brother." Like, what the <laughs> fuck do you think you're doing? Do I want to be emasculated? Like I'm 20 something years old. I'm going to be broke after this. I have no business even at this table. And you're bringing in this Scotland model over to me. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> hey, and you know what? That's a past life. Cause you're never going to feel that again. Never take it. Uh, at least tell her to take her fucking heels off. Jesus oh. Christ. Make her five, nine. Give me a shot. Anyway, Just a little shot. Kelly and I went, uh, Kelly and I went to breakfast at Tiffany's on Saturday and we're both like five, nine. We both had our heels on. And I realized walking around like, Oh, people probably think we're really important. We just work at Barstool Sports, though. We, you know, and you are important. <laughs> you are important. Um, oh, so yeah. what's your core memory that you want to share with your child? What's the thing that you did as a kid that you want to 
that you that you want to relive through their eyes. That's the way I kind of look at it. And then we'll, that's how we'll close out the show. So whenever I was listening to you and your brother talk about it, I laughed really hard when you were like, what our kids do now on the weekends is like what was like a big vacation for us when we were younger. Like my parents, and this is also going out to the dads. So shout out, I know you're going to be dealing with this, all the dads too. It's like, I we went to the beach. So growing up in Texas, grew up in the Dallas area. South Padre Island, which is basically in Mexico, which is a very long trip, but we went every single summer, my entire childhood. And it was something to look forward to. And the core memories of me were like learning how to boogie board and, you know, build sandcastles and whatever. But what I can, what I still remember, even as, you know, in my thirties, my dad having to drag every single thing down to the beach, putting up the tent, putting up everything. But now I look back and I'm so appreciative because the memory, like those are my favorite, like we went on other vacations, we went to other places, but every year that was like our annual tradition. And it made it so special because I got to learn everything. Like I love the ocean. I love the beach. I love, you know, now as an adult, like just sitting and looking at the waves with a drink, but as a kid learning how to love every aspect of it. And as you got older and realizing that no matter if I was two years old or 16, my dad was putting in work. My dad was making sure it was perfect. And so it was a core memory for me, just like remembering like every year learning something different, but my parents making sure that it was perfect for us. And I'm sure my dad didn't enjoy a single second of doing all that, but looking back (laughs) at it, like I learned how to throw a football with my dad on the beach. I learned how to play volleyball on the beach and he made sure it was perfect. And then my mom making sure the lunches were perfect. So I'm really excited to see that through my son's eyes of like learning, like, wow, this ocean is really cool. And then the next year learning how to build sandcastles and so on and so forth. And remembering that my parents made sure it was really special. That to me is like a major, major key that I need to keep up with. And well, and, and I appreciate you sharing that with, with, with us in the audience and my core memory as a dad going to the beach was the first time I brought my daughter to the beach. I built the entire tent and I think we were maybe there for seven minutes before that tent was packed up and we left again. Yep. Um, that was the core memory. You were, you were probably on that beach for nine minutes. You thought it was like three hours. Oh, for sure. For sure. But like, and that's why, so, you know, my son is 13 months now. So last summer when he was like a newborn baby, I was like, we're not taking him to the beach. He's never going to remember it. It's going to be a pain in the ass for us. Like even this summer, we'll take him a little bit, but I'm not doing like a whole big, no. like to no. do because he won't remember it. Like, so I like, that's where I'm like, I don't know. Like I have pictures of me. Like I was born in October when I wasn't even a year old on the beach. I'm like, what were you guys doing? Like, I don't remember that. They got like 10 minutes. They're hot. They're sweating. They don't know what's going on. There's a big yellow thing in the sky and it's burning my face off. What's going on, daddy? Get me off this sand. (laughs) Hell. I want, I want him to remember it and be thankful. Like I'm thankful to my parents for it. But like like, my dad was, has our, both my parents were like, well, you know, we can still go. I'm like, dad, are you right? You want to build tents again? He's like, yeah, it was great. I was like, no, it wasn't. You can't. Like, hey, daddy. Like, hey, daddy. Aren't we rich? Can you just bring me back to the air conditioned room that I was that I'm in all the time? Um, so, Casey, thanks. This was great. I really appreciate you joining the show. This was unbelievable. We have see we have we had a female on right because I'm diverse. We you got are. a little bit. We got the matriarchy. We got the patriarchy. We got it all up in here. You're um, inclusive. I mean, I'm, I'm an inclusive dad. Um, Casey, where can everyone find you? Um, just, just, just plug yourself and then we'll get the hell out of here. Yeah. So it's spelled very weird. My name is K A Y C E. So Casey Smith on Twitter, Casey underscore Smith on Instagram, Mm. because of course we had to add that in. Uh, and then anywhere on Barstool Sports, you know, I, I'm a little bit in hibernation until football season, but I'm, I'm around I'm keeper of the system. I'll be playing mini golf in a few weeks. So anything Barstool Sports, you can find me there, but I love to mix it up on Twitter or X or whatever we call it these days. So let's mix it up. All right. Thank you, Casey, for joining. And for the rest of you, if you got some tips, you got some tricks, throw them my way. You can follow me at Nikki the Good on Twitter. That's where I live. I'm also on TikTok over there. Um, you got some parents. You got you got some kids around. want to hear about them. Talk about them. It's cool to talk about them. And until we'll see you again.